Good afternoon. When I was teaching, I had, I think, a well-earned reputation for starting pook on the hour when it was uh, given and quitting then the quitting time. I always figured students were paying these terrific tuition costs. They're going to get the full measure of this. Never could quite understand how come the students were so happy when the prof didn't show up or came late or something like that. Seemed to be a, a, a poor thinking. Anyway, I'm Dick Schneider, formerly of the art department here. Uh, I was a resident potter. Uh, still a resident potter, along with my daughter Laura over here, uh, but we're not residents anymore. Uh, we're doing it on, on our own. So I do have that background. And this lecture is going to start really about 30 years from, uh, prior to this time. Um, back in the old days when uh, the art department was in the uh, uh, Old Main, as we called it. Some of you may recall that there were ends on Old Main. There were two blocks on either end. And then the uh, inside, which still remains, was uh, uh, being used too. The art department was on the west end. Uh, I had the ceramics in the basement, uh, which was pretty rotten smelling, but uh, that's where it was. And uh, a little bit of a, uh, oh, what, uh, a dangerous situation. Old Main in those days was a, a nail biter for the administration. Uh, if you got up on the third floor, way the heck up there, there were beams, 12 inch by 12 inch beams holding up the roof. And of course it was dreadfully dry up there. The music department used it for uh, rehearsal rooms, but it was awfully dry. And there'd be always somebody you know, catching a cigarette back into there. And the, the worry about the whole building going down, that really was quite a bit of a concern. Um, I, in addition to being a teacher of ceramics, happened to be, about 30 years ago, uh, a, uh, the chairman of the faculty. Now, that's a little strange today because we don't do it, but in those days, the faculty met as a whole. Everybody could come. Nowadays, of course, there's a senate, which is a select group. But in those days, I chaired the whole faculty. So I had my office down in the pot shop and also did a little bit of faculty dealing. And uh, Lee Sherman Dreyfus, of course, was our uh, chancellor at that time. And obviously, as a chairman, uh, I had relationships with him. And we chatted here and there and uh, talked about certain things. And uh, Lee would be thinking about various projects. Well, one of the things he had going for him, uh, he, he would not come into work very early in the morning. Early in the morning, he would stick around home or in the back corner, and he would dream up ideas. <laughs> that was what he did, okay? That's what he felt his job was. And he had a whole list of things that he would like to see go. And many of these didn't make it. Many, many of these were pretty much cockamamie. I mean, uh, you know, the, an extension uh, campus in Constantinople, for instance. Uh, but that was an idea he had, okay? Uh, and some of these didn't fly. Others did go, like the campus abroad, which is really pretty much a, uh, a, a fine example for other institutions. All these uh, campuses that we have all over the world, literally. Uh, so he had those things going. But he had, in the back of his mind, concern about that old main. And the old main was kind of a uh, political uh, football. Okay, what do you do with Old Main, 1894 to the present? Well, one, wipe it up, okay? Put it in the parking lot. We need the parking lot, put it in the parking lot, right? Uh, well, no. Um, make uh, uh, Main Street kind of curve through nice. Instead of being just a straight line, put a nice curve in there, perhaps. Might be all right. Plant some trees, and they make a little bit of a, a park about it. That's a possibility. What else? Well, maybe knock the two ends off and shorten the building and then kind of gut it. Maybe bionic with the inside all done all over again. Various different ideas like that came through. And uh, one of the ideas he had was uh, 
if I get rid of the building, you always spoke in the first person singular. If I get rid of the building, um, there's going to be all kinds of hassle. Mainly, there's going to be all kinds of hassle from the alumni, okay? Because those of you who are college graduates and have the unfortunate circumstance of graduating from a, an ivy-covered wall, I mean, that's, that's the nostalgia, right? Got the whole thing going. And we do have ivy on old names, so that's okay. Uh, but that would be a problem for the alumni. There would be some upset about that. Uh, can't we really do that? Uh, what else can we do? Well, we can change it around somehow or other. Um, and uh, he and I chatted every once in a while off the subject. And uh, he brought this up one time. And it happened to be, you may not remember, but uh, Lee was one of the few Americans who actually got to China, the first Americans to get to China, uh, right after Dick Nixon got there, okay? Uh, very unusual circumstance. And uh, he, was, he was impressed by uh, a scene he witnessed. Uh, there were about 100 students were out, everybody with a shovel. And they were out on this uh, plain area and everybody was shoveling. 100 students all shoveling, making an airstrip, okay? A landing strip. And hey, you know, 100 people all scuffling away. And by the end of the day, you got an airport, right? Got enough people. To, how do we do it in this country? Well, you get a couple of dozers, right? And bash it on through. And, you know, with force, we do it that way. But he was very much impressed by that. And then he's also thinking, well, listen, if... Um, if we could do something, we'd get rid of old main building, but we resurrect it someplace else. Maybe this will work out and cover the bases, okay? We do have this building now, this brand new building, this College of Natural Resources building, and it's got an empty wall on it. Maybe we could put something on the wall. Dick, you're an artist, you know. Uh, you should know all those things. Well, geez, Lee, I don't know. Uh, yeah whatever, but uh, yeah, that's a possibility. And of course, I had just finished a mosaic for uh, the senior class gift at Oshkosh for 1976. It's on our library today if you want to take a look. Um, so I had a bit of a reputation for a mosaicist. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a possibility. We could do a, a mosaic on it or a, a, a low relief on the wall or some various kinds of things. Well, okay, try with this, Dick. Try it out, all right? Let's see what this, how this works. And uh, let, me, let me know what you're doing. Well, I diddled around a little bit, and I came up with an idea that I thought might work. And we'll see, let's take a look at the building as it was existing in those days. And there we are. That's the College of Natural Resources. Exquisite design, right? I mean, 50 by 150 of fit beige brick. <laughs> beige brick. I mean, look at our campus. I mean, it's beige brick all over. You know, we've got the unfortunate campus of having uh, uh, no uh, levels at all. You look at uh, Kenosha. Oh, geez, beautiful hills going through, golf course, the whole thing. Uh, you look at uh, Carthage College on the lake shore, beautiful view once more and so on. And what do we got? Flat out, okay? Glacial outwash. <laughs> Golden sands, right? Uh, not much going for it. And what are the buildings we've got on this campus? Well, it's what I call the shoebox architecture, okay? These are the, the state architects who are designing these buildings. You take a shoebox, you punch some holes into it in the door, and that's a building, okay? Uh, we put different rooms in it. It's a, uh, a, a dorm, uh, otherwise a classroom, a large classroom. You fool around, but still basic box architecture, square. Very exciting. But they decided, no, we'll, we'll make a little bit of a design on it, uh, because what we're going to do is we'll put a bit of a crack here. Five marks right through here, <laughs> just a little bit. And then the pieces just don't over here, 
College of Natural Resources. Oh, that's what that is. Isn't that remarkable, okay? <laughs> Fortunately, there's a little bit ivy coming up here like varicose veins, but that's going to be a little bit nicer with time, isn't it, okay? But it's not really very exciting. It's got this empty building, and Lee is saying to me, could you do something? If, 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 I, get, if I tear down Old Main, could we put up sort of like a memorial? on this wall of some kind or other, okay? And, uh, he, you know, he, he had sort of a little fondness for ceramics. He didn't know what it was all about. One of, his, one of his ideas was a solar furnace, which is a total impossibility uh, to, to try to fire pottery with a solar furnace. But that was an idea he had. Uh, and he was thinking, uh, you know, in those days, uh, when we uh, had enrollment, students would go around to various a department heads, okay? And they would get an IBM card. Remember the IBM cards? Yeah. With all little punches in there and a slash off to the side. Yeah. And the student would have one of these for each one of the course. When he had those in his hand, he was in, enrolled for these. And all he had to do then at the end of the day was to turn these in, right? Yeah. And Lee is saying, well, listen, that, that wall, that's about 8,000 square feet, 50 by 150. We'll give you a little bit. Um, and we have about 8,000 students right now. Uh, you see the wheels coming already, huh? Okay. Listen, what we're going to do on registration day, 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 we're doing registration day. You get into the line where the students are turning in these cards and getting enrolled in it, and you have a pile of soft clay balls, 8,000 of them, okay, huh? A student comes through and gives the cards up, and Dick, you give them a ball of clay, and they go whop, and splat it all out flat, and mark it with some kind of a design, hieroglyphic of some sort, and set it aside, and then we fire these and put them up tomorrow on the wall. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's a nice idea. I mean, it really is pretty, pretty creative. I, I marvel at it. Uh, totally impractical, of course. <laughs> but uh, it's an idea. But it gets the, the idea is going, could we do something with ceramic? Because it can't be painted. We do have some nice murals downtown. Those are painted. But they aren't going to last. Murals have been up. Uh, th 30 years already, still lasting pretty well as far as I can see. Uh, so that's going to really be a, a, a medium that we will need in uh, this climate. And this is, of course, a southern exposure. That means that this wall is going to get what in the summertime? Uh, over 100 degrees with the sun bearing down on it. And of course, the beautiful winter, it's going to be, <laughs> what, 30, 40 below, right? Overnight, anyhow. It's going to need to have that. And that means it's going to have a lot of expansion and contraction that has to be considered. Uh, and uh, how do you get something to stay up there? Uh, what kind of glue could you use? And all kinds of problems in there. And I'm a potter. I don't know all this stuff. But uh, you just need to work out. So he says, well, Dick, see what you can do with this, all right? Uh, what kind of a design would you put on there now? OK, here we got. The College of Natural Resources, right? And uh, let's say we want to put Old Main on the surface. So I took a photograph of Old Main and uh, had it printed in kind of a half stone. So it isn't very photographic because I don't want to make a picture of Old Main. I want to make a design of Old Main if you perceive the difference, okay? And put this onto the building. Um, so he had just dark and light, but uh, no half tones in between at all. And I made this little uh, uh, model of Old Main uh, and uh, used that as a, an example. And of course, you see, things have changed already. You see, uh, Sandy Street still in front, right? Remember that? Mm -hmm. And that was quite a hassle to have a, a Sandy Street uh, rejected or denied. Because, the, well, fire people were very much 
upset about not being able to get through the campus to get to the east side of town. Um, but that's about the way it was in those days. Uh, so yeah, we can maybe do something like that. But first thing we do is we cannot get any tax funds. This is strictly going to be all uh, contributions, okay? We had a meeting with some uh, big shots from uh, the Madison campus. I remember still walking in there, a bunch of guys sitting around the table, and I come in all smiling and tell them about this, and the guy says, no. <laughs> I mean, that was how he greeted me, okay? This is the attitude they had. Um, so we have to figure out how to do something like this. And, um, well, the, the colors are off, but what I was trying to do was to, don't you see, try to get the, the beige of the brick and the um, uh, brown of the uh, tiles, uh, the brown of the uh, building trim. So what I, remember the five uh, sections? Okay. Uh, so I cut this up into five sections. And uh, then what I did is I reversed every other section. So it's still pictorial, but it's not photographic, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a little bit more interest going to it. And uh, it happens to be that, uh, well, it's a, a, a pretty symmetrical building. So if you look carefully in the middle, yeah, there, there's Old Main and there's uh, the cupola, which of course has to be in there, and uh, the rest of the building. It also has the two ends on it, although those are pretty well disappeared into there. And I made the five sections because we're going to try to raise money for this. And we're talking to Len Gibb, who is running the uh, foundation at the institution here. And he would be the one to raise the money for all this, okay? Um, and uh, we're trying to figure out how we can do this. And we're saying, well, listen, maybe we do this in five sections. So we put up a section and raise the money for it and take care of it. And then people see how nifty that is. And then they will come forth with all kinds of money more for the next one, which will turn out to be just as nifty, even better. And then they double it and so on. So it kind of mushroom itself in financing. Hmm? You think so? Well, I don't know. Maybe I, I see a lot of kind of queer folks in the faces there that maybe aren't going to be agreeable. Anyhow. This is an idea, okay, by reversing. Of course, somebody said, let's try something else. <laughs> There's a college of natural resources. And you know, those poor kids over there, I mean, they got a reputation, right? I mean, it used to be in those days that uh, the guys would go around with a buck knife in the sheath in the hip and uh, a snooze uh, uh, can uh, impressed on the uh, jeans. Uh, of course, you can't have snooze it, no more tobacco, and uh, you can't carry a weapon anywhere, which is a buck knife. So uh, now they're, they're stuck with just, uh, what, sorrel boots that they wear all year long. <laughs> and, uh, okay, nice, nice people. Okay, very nice people. But uh, yeah, that's uh, natural resources. People get the image right away of, of hunters and so on. So okay, this is a possibility. But we don't want to have this titan uh, shooting a cannon at the pterodactyls or something <laughs> like that. It's, it's just not going to work too well. What else can we have? What else? Think about it now. Yeah, natural resources, how would you have a design? What would you do with it? Well, let's try something else. Oh, sure. Well, of course, state of Wisconsin, right? Now, state of Wisconsin is a lovely state, except for some GI time I spent all my life in. in in Wisconsin, okay? It's a nice state, very gentle state, doesn't have any you know, huge mountains or deep ravines or whatever, but still, uh, it's a nice state. But on the other hand, it is a weird shape, you know, with that thumb sticking up into uh, Door County, right? And uh, a little pinky finger stuck up into the Apostle Islands up there, and then a pregnant bulge going over towards uh, <laughs> Twin Cities. And of course, down at the bottom, you have a sharp line to block out all the uh, Chicago traffic. <laughs> Get rid of those. And then what I did was section it up in, in quarters and use the four 
uh, disciplines at that time of the College of Natural Resources, namely with a duck representing uh, wildlife management, uh, up above that little ripples uh, representing water, uh, over toward the uh, left, a couple of trees representing forestry, and down at the bottom, uh, a shovel, and you can't really make a, a design of a dirt, so I made shovels and picks on there for soils management. Uh, but it, 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 you know, it, it's an idea, uh, but pretty hard to work with. What else? Oh, yeah, come on. Remember we were talking, let me get a focus on there. Come on, guys. Where are you? Yeah, that's better there. Talking about the alumni going to raise the funds here. Well, this would be a great thing. Yeah, come on, Alice, we're going to homecoming, and you're taking a picture in front of that nice mural that they got up there <laughs> on that natural resources thing, huh? Uh, sure, but uh, no, okay? An idea. You just try these out. Well, all right, let's try this. Now. Let's get a little bit more serious. Are you doing it, Laura? Don't do it, I'll do it. <laughs> we're, we're fighting each other. Okay, yeah, sure, a Bucky Badger. I mean, what a sweet, darling little creature, right? Okay, uh, certainly, be very nice. Uh, and that'd be great for homecoming and the whole schmear, sure enough. But it, it, it's not Steve's point, right? It's Madison. Okay, now, what, what do we do for Steve's point? Oh, yeah. Stevie. Stevie the pointer. Sure enough. Okay. Now, this would be nice. This would be sort of saving old Maine in a way. It'd be a, uh, a fundraiser, uh, attractive to the alumni, have all really going for it, and basically just a crummy design. It's a <laughs> bad news. What else could we have possibly? What is a possible, a possible, a possible, uh, uh, idea. Now I'm going to ask you to look a little bit more carefully now because now you're going to be looking into my brain, which is kind of fuzzy. Okay? <laughs> it's not too clear. So you'll have to watch pretty carefully how this develops. This is pretty fine. If you look over here, can you see the human figure from Leonardo da Vinci? You remember him? Okay. You remember he did have that figure with had four arms and four legs, and it's been used well, it's been used pretty much trite for all kinds of uh, subjects. But I, I made this in such a way where it will just fit uh, into one of those five sections. Yeah, that's why I focused a little bit better, didn't it? Uh, remember that five sections business was for that was still operative. Okay, we do five sections at a time. Uh, but I made some changes with that. Uh, you have to look a little bit harder, but if you see, uh, I split the figure right down the line, and I kept the Leonardo figure on the right side, but I changed the left side into a feminine form. Okay? So we're covering both sections, whereas Leonardo just only did the one. And... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Try to make that circle go around so it fits right into that first section here and there. Make sense? Okay. What I tried to do then was to uh, make that fit into that section uh, for uh, purposes of, of the, the design. And uh, while I was at it, uh, up here at the top, I put sort of like little flames up into here. It struck me that that was sort of like a sun symbol in a, a stretch out. If, if I maybe put those flames in there, that might clue a, uh, clue a person in a little bit more. And uh, try to get a figure that uh, I thought would represent uh, a, a university. This is University of Wisconsin Stevens Point we're working on. Okay, a university, a people, people. Yeah, there has to be a person, a, a, a human form. So we'll put that in there. 
but uh, I'll make it so that it's both male and female cover that base. And uh, what Leonardo was doing, uh, actually you may not know this, Leonardo was making a figure which was a religious figure. <coughs> Excuse me, actually. Uh, if you uh, are of the uh, Judeo-Christian religion, you are aware that uh, Genesis says that uh, God created man in the image of himself, right? So in other words, we want to see what God looks like. Uh, I'm looking at all gods, all of you. You're looking at a God here, okay? Because that's the way God is. God made us in his own image. So that's an image of God right there. And that's proof because in addition to that, you see, if, if you hold your arms out this way and then raise your arms out uh, seven degrees off of the horizontal and spread your legs 14 degrees apart and you put a, a compass right with the navel as the point and scribe a large circle, it'll come around and just touch the arm, tips of your toes and your uh, legs. Just perfect form. Perfect form. Well, of course, God is perfect, right? That's part of the whole religion. So there's an indication of a perfect form. And in addition, not only that, but he's also covering it because if you hold your arms out straight and put your feet together and then draw a square around it, the square will fit in. And what is a more perfect geometric form than a square? Equal, uh, equal angles, equal uh, sides, right? So that's a, a religious form for me. But I thought that that had that kind of um, spiritual, but yet kind of intellectual uh, background that would make it a very perfect form for a university symbol. Enough of that. Let's go on. Well, let's see. Well, the university of Wisconsin. Okay, so now we got to get Wisconsin in there somehow or other. And do we have a, uh, a series of uh, symbols for Wisconsin? Well, yeah, sure. We got a whole bunch of them. Uh, over here, uh, a large leaf. That's got to be a maple leaf. Now, remember, you're dealing here with the College of Natural Resources. There's all those kids going around with the sorrel boots. You remember them? And they're uh, uh, checking out to make sure that this is Aser Saccharum, not Aser Saccharinum or Aser Rubrum. That's the way they talk. <laughs> uh, but I'm saying this, it's, it's a sugar maple tree, not a silver maple nor a red maple. That's a sugar. So I got a genuine leaf sugar maple and use that up, blew it up so that it would be about the right size. Now don't worry about the light and dark right now. We're just sort of toying with ideas here, okay? So I've got a fairly large leaf with a line around it and uh, that I haven't come across the uh, actual uh, blueprints for the 1894 uh, Old Maine. The actual blueprints. Here you and uh, use the uh, cupola, could get the actual cupola design from there that we've used and adopted and uh, blew that up enough so that that would fit right about into here. And you can't see it up here very well, but there is way about up here a uh, letter vein, right? And very cleverly the, uh, the architects made it in such a way in this drawing that the weather vane shows the southern exposure with a capital S, which happens to be the first letter of my last name. <laughs> okay. Up here, someplace or other. And uh, then over here, remember the uh, sort of like sun that I had, the flames going up to there? Uh, if that's going to be, let's say, sunny or summer, then uh, down here I put in a little bit of a snowflake for winter, so I've got two seasons taken care of. A little added ex extra uh, to look at. Hmm? Um, yeah, well, that's looking pretty fair. And uh, what we've got here is uh, a line of that uh, division. Moving along. Well, we've got the uh, map of uh, Stevens Point, of Portage County, really. And you are aware, of course, that there is a uh, kind of a, uh, uh, a V of the Wisconsin River coming down 
from Mosinee and the Plover River coming down from uh, up to Hatley and thereabouts, and intersecting pretty much in the vicinity of the campus itself. So I jiggled this around so that it pretty well fit right into the center. It would form then kind of a tracery of lines to pull these two designs together, I hoped. Then a few more things. Over here, can't see it very well in this room. Remember, these are all drawings, uh, ideas. Over here is a uh, robin. I found a nice picture of a robin with two little baby robins. Can you make them out? Well, oh, trust me, they're there. Rob a couple of baby robins. And of course, I had this little sort of romantic notion about the faculty being the mother robin and the uh, <laughs> going. <coughs> Um, well, let's see, we have to have a badger, not Bucky, check that out, but we had to have, had to have a, buck, uh, a badger. So I found a photograph of a badger coming out of a hole, uh, and, uh, well, okay, that looks pretty good. I made that fit in and brought it in sort of on a tangent with this circle then. So there was a little bit of a connection with that. Let's begin to leave piled up with stuff. That's a big wall, 150 feet, okay? Well, we get a few more things in there. We do have a state fish, Esox, muscology, okay? Or musky, if you will. But remember, that's uh, a uh, fisheries management. Um, and uh, I thought, well, well, maybe we should put some lettering in here. Uh, our, our particular design and type font that we used in those days, UWSP with the lazy S in there, was kind of a, uh, oh, a, a relatively easily identifiable scene. Uh, and also, anybody who takes a picture of this later on sometime will say, Geez, damn, where do we take that picture? <laughs> oh, got to get feet. Right there, we know about that. Um, we we'll look on the other side. Well, I should say, uh, about this time, uh, Lee had appointed a committee. Oh, geez. Had appointed a committee. There's uh, nothing worse than a committee of academia, uh, unless it's a church committee. I mean, that, that's, that's worse. But uh, he appointed a committee. And they're pretty well done, okay? Uh, the student council president, the campus planner, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember everybody else, uh, the, uh, uh, the fundraiser, uh, various people would be into, onto this committee, including, obviously, Dan Trader, the, uh, the uh, dean of, of uh, natural resources in those days, okay? Uh, and Dan's a nice guy, was a nice guy. Uh, darling wife, she buys pottery every once in a while, so darling. But the dad said, okay, go ahead if you want. And he took her, sort of the uh, stand back attitude. Uh, but then was getting, okay, uh, I, I, I don't really care what kind of design you put in, as long as it's got a big buck. A big buck, that's what we want down here. So I figured, okay, uh, I found a picture of a, a 10 pointer and stuck it over here into this area. And it doesn't happen now anymore, but you remember there's a door in the building, right? Mm -hmm. About here. And then there's windows. That was Trainer's office. <laughs> so this big buck is looking across into his office. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell him that, but it, we know that, okay? <laughs> then the figure up at the top wanted to get something of more of the Native American history of Wisconsin with this figure, which you may or may not recognize, as uh, a portrait of Black Hawk, a Sauk uh, Native American uh, leader, uh, who was the leader of the, the last Indian War fought on uh, camp, fought on the uh, property, the land of Wisconsin. Uh, actually, had Lincoln and uh, what's his name, uh, the Jefferson Davis, uh, both were fighting 
against Black Hawk in Wisconsin in those days. So I figured I would do that. Uh, the thing is, uh, George Catlin did some portraits of Native American people, and he did one of Black Hawk, fine painting. That's what uh, Catlin did a lot of, all kinds of, of portraits. Um, did one, and he, he made them facing the other way. I didn't want Black Hawk looking out of the picture, so I changed it around this way, same thing. And got permission from the National Gallery to be able to use that. Um, well, it's not actually um, copyrighted, but still, I, I thought it would be wise to have a, a permission. So I put that up into there, and you can see then uh, a little bit of a line where he's holding his Black Hawk medicine bag over his arm, draped over here, and it becomes a nice line leading down into there. I'm hoping it's starting to come together. Uh, you can nod your head if it's starting to come together for you, otherwise don't say anything, okay? <laughs> because now what I want to do is to start to play around with lights and darks, to emphasize some parts and to subdue other ones. But generally, I think I've got the placement and the size pretty much the way I should like to have. Well, it made quite a bit of difference, didn't I? Okay. You can see, for instance, on the Leonardo figure, the, the, the two halves, and the left half is much more feminine, isn't it? Uh, the robins over here came out pretty nicely. Oh, and then you can see the robins are sitting on top of our state flower, wildlife flower, which, of course, is violet, and uh, brought out the UWSP, but made the leaf go down in importance. Uh, that's the way it's, I figured it should ought to be, something like that. So each panel of the five panels sort of has its own entity, but yet there is a, 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 a congruence, a coming together of all of these, uh, I hope, at the end. And it's not the kind of thing where you're going to see it all at once. You're going to have to walk past it in order to look at it in sections. So we want to get that onto this wall. Remember the big brick wall, okay? I don't know. And some people just have an orgasm looking at the beige brick, but it, 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 it's not all that exciting <laughs> to me, okay? It's a brick wall, and that's about all it is. Okay, what do we do? Well, I put that onto my little model once more. That's about what I had in mind. Uh, not exactly, but pretty close. And what we're going to then do is uh, plant some pricker bushes in the front so some hoodlums wouldn't come up too close and try, try to pull off these uh, tiles. Uh, and maybe even change the street or the road that goes through there, which of course it did happen. And you are aware that those poor little uh, trees in the front are, are gone, long gone. Okay? All kinds of changes have occurred. But the, the wall is still remaining the same these 30 years. So how are we going to do this? OK, now I'm taking this design and making it uh, in the proper, I think, the proper tones of light and dark, gray and, and, and not gray, light gray and dark gray and so on. Because uh, you remember Lynn Gibb, who's a foundation leader, uh, had, is supposed to be getting uh, scrounging up the money. And it happened to be that he was at a conference over in Twin Cities about this time, okay? I don't remember what the conference was. But, uh, you know, they're sitting around having drinks or whatever, and he's talking to these couple of guys who turn out to be uh, chem uh, electrical engineers from Control Data Corporation. Now, I don't think Control Data Corporation exists as an entity anymore, but they did in those days. A big outfit, something like IBM, okay? And control data was really into the uh, working edge of computer technology. That this is what they were doing. Uh, they were, well, it, you remember the, uh, this is about the Cuban Missile Prep Crisis, remember that? They were uh, on the edge of making this so that you could fly over with an airplane and take a picture over Cuba 
and take off, and then tomorrow you come by with an airplane, but it doesn't go exactly in the same place. It's bouncing or shifted or working around, and you take another picture, and then control data kind of homogenizes these two, puts one on top of the other, and oh, you got a uh, missile uh, site here or something like that, okay? It could do that. And that was, that was unusual. That was just really incredible I think, in those days, 30 years ago, okay? I mean, nowadays, big deal. Nowadays, you can get a, uh, uh, a transfer made, put it on the T-shirt of your aunt and uncle or whatever, uh, and no problem at all. But in those days, this was pretty, pretty remarkable. And these guys are talking about pixels. Pixels? What the heck is a pixel? Is that something like a leprechaun? I don't know. What it is. <laughs> Pixels on it. And uh, very things like this. This is the way they spoke. But they said, gee, uh, Gib, uh, this is a very interesting idea you got uh, on this uh, mural. Uh, how do you get that on the wall? How do you get that up there? Well, I can't very well stick on the ground with a brush and paint this in. That's not going to work in here. Can we calculate it somehow or other uh, by a com computation? Uh, and they're saying, well, see, what, what we're doing, we analyze photographs. We analyze, we break it up into squares. And you're aware, of course, that uh, your TV is a bunch of squares, right? Little dots. And tiny dots, small enough, looks pretty much like a uh, photographic picture. Uh, but these are going to be uh, a little bit smaller and more difficult to see. Uh, but can we, can we break this up into horizontals and verticals and uh, find out what the amount of gray is on each one of these squares? Now, how many, how many squares do you think you need for this? Well, of course, the smaller the squares, the more it's going to blend together. You can see that, right? Okay, uh, the bigger the squares, the easier it's going to happen. So someplace in between, what can we do? Well, I had learned about a, a uh, design that was done uh, at Wright-Patterson Field in uh, Dayton, Ohio, uh, in which they had done something like this using one-inch tiles. One-inch tiles. And these were done on the inside wall, so they didn't have to worry about uh, hot and cold or moisture or whatever. But that was a, a nice design, and that still exists today. But that's sort of what they had. So I'm saying, well, uh, yeah, one inch by one inch, Lord, that's going to be a million tiles. I don't know if we can handle that. But if we went two by two, okay, two by two, uh, that would mean 286,000 squares. Can we handle 286,000? Yeah, I think we can. If we do this uh, in a very conscientious, very careful, mechanical way, square that whole thing up, 50 by 150, blocked off into two-inch squares. Each square has a certain amount of gray in it, some light, some dark, some black, some white, but a little bit of everything. Now in those days, I don't know. Can, can you uh, can you see uh, Snoopy? They're kind of fuzzy. There's there's the Snoop up there, and a little hat up here, a little aviator hat he always had, and so on. Uh, this was all done with a typewriter, and this is what the uh, computer nuts did during lunchtime in those days. Okay, they would type up. Uh, Examples like this, again, going back to those cars with the dots in them and the slash off to the side, uh, each, each line was a card, okay? And they would type this in, so that such a, a design would show up on a, on a printout. And uh, that would be printed out, of course, on this uh, uh, paper that you're familiar with, so the white and uh, uh, green panels. Uh, but that's what they would do, you try to figure that out. Uh, just my estimation. And I figured, hey, that's not too bad. I'll try that myself. 
Okay, and I'll use my IBM Selectric. And by selecting uh, W's and 7's and 1's and periods and so on, I typed lines across. And I tried to get an idea of making some of these tiles darker and some of these tiles or uh, panels darker and some of them lighter. Uh, get a better idea. Uh, those of you who are fortunate enough to wear glasses, take them off and take a look at it now and see if that helps any. Does that kind of blur together a little bit more? Now, if you're not fortunate enough to have glasses, then almost close your eyes. Okay, so you're looking through your eyelashes. Kind of fuzz it away almost all the way. Does it kind of bring it together a little bit, please? Hmm? Now, I'm just guessing at this, okay? Just trying it out. Well, that's the idea. Of course, here this won't work because our tiles are going to be square. And the uh, type uh, letters are going to be rectangular, so it won't really work. But it's the idea, once more, that we're talking about. So what I did, uh, I made a whole bunch of squares and painted them gray, different grays, and cut them up into two inch by two inch. And uh, at home, put, the, put these squares on the table. Okay, this way. And I go back, take a look at it. And I come over here, and I move a few of these around and change them a little bit, take a look at it again, and come back. A lot of walking back and forth. <laughs> and with this, okay? And when I thought I had it pretty good, then I come up with the Elmer's glue and stick them all together so that I can pick it up and stand it up so you can look at it, okay? I uh, get some kind of a notion. Now, I've overdone it here because I've got the dark way too dark. Uh, and it is pretty blocked. It isn't very uh, fine at all. But you get the idea of square tiles, right? Now, here's one of our tiles. Two inch, no, not two inch. One and 15 sixteenths by one and 15 sixteenths. Each of these tiles has a sixteenth around it for a grout edge, okay? As you know, you, the, the uh, tiles and the bathroom floor, uh, the shower, any place, has also always a little a bit of a uh, uh, grout line all around it. So it's not one by, uh, not two by two, a little bit short, Oop, too fast. Uh, so it's a little bit shy of that. And we checked out with various uh, suppliers. Um, and uh, again, Lynn Gibbs doing a great job. He ends up in only in New York, where they have only in tiles. That's what these people do, make tiles. And they say, hey, that's a nifty idea. Listen, uh, we can't give you the tiles. Uh, but uh, if, if, you can, if you can get a truck up here and take them back, we'll give you half of them that you need, okay? So you don't have to buy all of them, just half of them. So sure enough, uh, Len Gibb got uh, the Wausau Tile to hire out a, uh, um, a flatbed and run out to New York and pick up these tiles for us. A gift, half of them, uh, from Olean Tile Company. Uh, and a whole pile of these. So what I'm going to try to do now is get some of these tiles and put a uh, design into each one, starting at light and going down dark. 28 tiles, gradations. Looking at each one, obviously tile number one, which would be white, but it isn't, it's going to be beige. Over the beige brick again. Uh, tile number one. And tile number two is going to turn out to be, well, see, another thing that we got from uh, control data was that's focusing better, isn't it? How's that? What they would do, I would make them six inch tiles, uh, six inch designs, and I would send those over to Twin Cities, and they would analyze these and come up with a light-dark ratio. Three decimal places they came up with. Three decimal places, Lord, I don't need that. I mean, you know, just uh, point one or something, okay. But that's what they did. They, they kind of thrived on this sort of stuff. So the, uh, this was the first one that I came up with. 
uh, get a deer. Well, a deer now, of course, wildlife management, that's appropriate for the, uh, the college. And uh, when I sent it over there, and they sent it back again, they say, just a little bit darker. Can you make it a little bit darker? And say, well, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just make a dark line around it. That'll add some more darkness to it. Oh, just a little bit. And send it back. They say, oh, hey, that was just nice. That's just fine. That's exactly good for tile number two. Just like that. Don't touch. All right? Although they're analyzing it uh, six by six, we're going to shrink it down to a two by two. Well, fortunately, uh, a mallard is, of course, got a lot of nice uh, dark lights to it. Uh, so I did the same thing and uh, put a line around this one for tile number two. Again, sort of uh, in, uh, uh, in honor of wildlife management. Okay, I'm going to try to get all these different areas of the College of Natural Resources involved in it. Well, you all remember amoebas? I'm trying to make one. <laughs> Hold on. Well, the point is, you can't hardly make a bad amoeba. <laughs> okay. What am I doing? I'll have to ask you to help me, Lord. Oh, sure, see? Okay, as I said, you can't make a, uh, you make a bad amoeba. Almost any kind of blob will work on it. <coughs> so that suggests uh, the uh, microscopic level that uh, students are working on in that college in various places. Well, another wildlife animal, uh, the beaver, our, our largest uh, uh, mammal. Uh, and of course, the reason why we have so many um, na place names on, uh, in Wisconsin uh, in, in French. Uh, we have a little place up north near the uh, Lac de Flambeau Reservation. Lock the Flambeau Lake of Torch. Well, it's because when some of the French uh, uh, fur buyers came through in canoes, they saw some of the Indians out on the water out there with torches made out of a, a perch rolled up, and they were spearing fish uh, that way, which they're still doing today, but not using torches anymore, using a, um, a flashlight. Uh, so, Lake of the Torches. As, a, as an indication. So you can see all these different states, all these different cities and places have uh, French names. So the, uh, the uh, beaver would be a very important uh, historical animal. Well, again, getting sort of almost microscopic uh, is the uh, Helgramite. This would have to do with fisheries because this is a great bait for trout fishing, particularly and other things, okay? You might recognize that or, or not, but uh, that's what this is supposed to be doing. No, this is not the road up there at Wausau that we got straight up. <laughs> this is close to it. But the little clue down in the corner down there, 250X, should give you a clue, 250 magnification of what? A paper surface. Show this to a paper scientist student in paper, he said, oh, yeah, right away, that's, that's paper. That's what the fibers in paper look like if you look up close. So I had another, uh, another medium to include in this collection of designs. And moving right along. Well, this is what uh, the science people would call a hydrologic cycle. Uh, unfortunately, when I designed this, I designed it the other way around, light, dark, reverse, so that the sun was not a black, dark disk, but a white one on a dark background, okay? But uh, when control data got through analyzing it, 
they said, hey, it, it's the right figures for this reverse, if you want to use it that way. And these are not supposed to be pictorial. These are supposed to be symbols, okay? So yeah, we can use it. So this is a symbol of uh, how the rain is falling down, uh, groundwater goes out, gets uh, evaporated up into the air, becomes a cloud, and back down again. Hydrologic cycle, sure. Supposed to be a little bit of an educational wall. So I have a little bit of a leaf of a very nice gentle leaf. Poison ivy. This is one you can touch. I never could remember poison ivy. Leaves of three let them be, right? That's what we used to say in the scouts. Also, I had leaves of five man alive, but that didn't make it. He said leaves of three. So this is a uh, Poison ivy. And continuing to get darker, here's another one that is probably well known to uh, people in the field, but not so much to the layman. Anyway, soil, dirt, okay? Soil, just not, not archaeology, uh, not geology. We're not going deep now. We're just doing superficial. So this is uh, layers of dirt. In uh, well, a typical uh, pondful soil in, in a uh, uh, forest, and this is how a uh, soil scientist would graph or design this and be able to respond to it or work with it. Yeah, there were some buffaloes in Wisconsin back in the old days, they didn't last very long, but there were some around. So, there's a largest uh, beast. Uh, in uh, historic times. And I still was kind of concerned. I was, I was leaving soils out, uh, getting all kinds of wildlife in, stuff like that. So I figured I put a tree in here. Uh, the tree then will show the dendritic system of all the uh, roots down in the bottom, as well as uh, the uh, uh, branches up in the uh, tree, and form a bit of a design covering both wood and uh, soils. And of course, someplace in there probably have a uh, symbol of uh, a space shot of uh, the, uh, the globe. And fish is okay. I had a, I had a bullhead I could put in there, but that didn't, didn't go over too good there, that bullhead. I figured that's, that's, that's natural, but no, no, I mean, <coughs> we, we went ahead, it, it had to go with a trout, you know, trout, trout, those are the guys that wear the vests and had the little hat and everything, you know, right, and they're very good with the dry flies and, and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll have to have a trout on there. And the nice thing about trout is you can make all kinds of dots on them, right? You know, I can either erase or add some dots, right? Because I'm working with light and dark. And this probably doesn't make any sense anymore today, but again, three, uh, 30 years ago, this is a, uh, a, a map, a linear map, of uh, the uh, field station out at Sunset Lake, okay? The little dots down there in the center, those are buildings that existed in those days. And uh, you see the shoreline coming through kind of on a uh, diagonal and a road, the dotted line going on in. So wildlife field station, which is considerably different today. So this is a historical tile. And the uh, prairie chicken, which is uh, known today uh, through the Hammerstrums, uh, who publicized that animal quite a bit. I, I made a real nice prairie chicken but I made it with the other light and dark again, one of these switched around, okay? So that the drum uh, in the neck would be white instead of dark. Uh, but again, control data said, hey, that's a nice design. It's a nice number. It's going to fit out pretty good if you use it reverse. So this will be a prairie chicken symbol, not a picture of, but a symbol.
And uh, here into uh, a little more with uh, uh, soil, excuse me, with uh, plant uh, terminology, a dicotyledon uh, cross section of a plant. Uh, again, a botanist would probably be able to catch on to this. I don't know, but I, I would think so. I would hope so. Have you seen the uh, paper mill down in the uh, uh, classroom center in the uh, science center? Big machine, about a block long. Uh, a paper mill, small size, but uh, very effective. This is a section of that. And once more, a paper scientist can look at this and recognize where this would be in this long arrangement of uh, uh, paper that rolled through it, the whole thing. Uh, a paper uh, press. All the time we've been talking, we have been using the term rather loosely with water. Uh, this, of course, is a water atom, a, an H2O, two H's and an O, right? So it's not a, uh, not a soup, soup or a uh, uh, Mickey Mouse, but a uh, d diagram of a water uh, molecule. Uh, Adam, excuse me. Now I'm trying to get darker tiles all the time. Continually getting darker, right? You notice that. And I'm getting kind of running out of stuff to do. Uh, but we'll take here a bluegill. Well, that's okay. Because bluegill's got a lot of uh, side to them, so we can make uh, the uh, top dark and leave the uh, bottom light. And, and, and these are fine, especially for little kids that are, uh, that are fishing. Uh, it's a pretty well-known uh, fish. That's, that's pretty good. We can stay with that. Well, they haven't got too many plants in there, but I, I encountered one, uh, a, um, oh, can't think of, some, some kind of, whoops, went too far. Uh, some kind of a berry right now. My, my mind escapes me. Who? A little older. Oh, berry? Yeah, thank you. Bunch berry. Uh, I, I, I like the alliter alliteration of bunch berry. It just sounded kind of nice. Okay. It's a cute little small plant. Uh, I thought it would be pretty good. And a uh, little plant identification. And of course, these poor guys, they got mostly guys. They come in with the uh, the snooze bucket and the, you know, okay. I mean, they, they got the idea that we're going to go out and you know, start kicking uh, twigs around and so on. And they don't realize how much time they're going to spend in the lab, right? They get pretty well upset about that. And so the uh, uh, binocular, the microscope, thank you. Uh, the microscope is a very important uh, item to have around and they become very uh, familiar with it. And another one, because they do a lot of measuring outside for different sizes, uh, uh, how much per acre and so on, uh, this is a very important uh, instrument, uh, the transit. And getting darker, and we still gotta get darker, right? Oh yeah, Wisconsin, River Wisconsin. The river, Wisconsin had, Wisconsin's river is probably the most utilized body of water in the world. It's got more dams going through it, holding up and holding the water and letting it through and using it uh, for uh, electric uh, uh, production and paper mills and so on. So I put in the Wisconsin River, that's not a crack down there, it's supposed to be that. And there is a little bump right in the middle, which is where Wisconsin, where Stevens Point is, right? Just a little bump, not a big one, just a little bump. Don't want to be too pretentious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, our state uh, insect. No, it isn't. But uh, I could make it in, uh, a mosquito small enough 
to get onto here and it'd show up pretty well. And it's him running out of the white space. <coughs> Once more, for both for pulp and paper technology, and for forest uh, te technology, uh, aspen uh, is a very important tree. You go out and you see uh, any other load of trees is going to be aspen uh, logs. It's very popular, very common for uh, uh, paper pulp. So this is an aspen leaf. Well, actually. It's a uh, Populus grundi dentata, a uh, large tooth aspen, as opposed to the quick aspen. We'll show off there. And just about out, you have to do something with this. Well, okay. Uh, over here at the uh, museum, they've got a huge collection of bird eggs, which somebody collected many decades ago at a time when it was okay to rob nests. And this person got a terrific collection and ended up giving them to the university, to the uh, museum. So we got a lot of eggs if you want to do some egg studies for one, one reason or another. And this is one uh, which is a uh, plover egg. Although if you're at Cedar Point, you call it plover, right? Okay. And of course, we're finding number 28. We're running out of black. So there we are. Got the whole thing done. And you see how this is kind of trans translating into light and dark. Okay? And all of this has been analyzed by controlled data street arts. These guys probably put in about $25,000 worth of part time work over the weekend. Uh, they finally said, Dick, you got to quit doing this, uh, sending us stuff. Uh, we, we really can't spend that much time anymore. They were very generous, very generous. So these are all done uh, to about three decimal places, but that's close enough. Okay, now, hey, remember I said this has to be a, uh, uh, a self-funding operation. We have to raise the money for it. That's what Len Gibbs had to do. He has to go scrunner. Uh, knock on doors and uh, scrounge up both materials <coughs> and funds. And furthermore, I will design this uh, in such a way where it can be done by anybody, where you can come into a design studio where we're making tiles, and I will show you how to do this, and you can actually make some tiles and set them and put them up on the wall. Actually, you're a very own. How would you like to have a piece of the mural, the uh, pyramid at Giza? Yeah, I put that rock there. Okay. Some people are going to be able to say, "I put that tile there. I did that. I had my hand was on that." So how do we do this now? I have to go around, and I have well, I have to go talk to anybody that'll have. Um, uh, anybody who will be able to uh, uh, donate some time. And I would go to oh, Catholic women and give a lecture, and next thing you know, there'd be some women in the real studio and have brought along a little uh, baby crib for the kid would be, they'd be working, taking time to show how to do that. Bring a boy scout group over here, half a dozen of them, show the kids how to do these things. <coughs> Uh, we showed the uh, various um, dormitories how to do some of these. And the dormitories actually had a little bit of an art, um, uh, a, a, a challenge going about who could put in, which dorm could put in the most time or the most effort. Because all of these designs were pretty young and simple to do, uh, but there were a bunch of steps they go through. So what I was going to be doing now would be going out and giving uh, product, giving uh, lectures to Kiwanis's and uh, church boards and any place, any place I could possibly get help, physical help or financial help. And Lynn would go around and try to find knocking on doors. 
So he would go to IBM's and stuff like that. So this is what I would do. Uh, I conceived of this as being done in panels. Hey, you can't pick up this whole thing. It's going to have to be done in sections, okay? Uh, so what? Uh, maybe two inch by, uh, excuse me, uh, two foot by two foot panels, possibly. Maybe by, uh, by an inch thick, possibly. Uh, these are all possible, possible ideas. And so I made this out of cardboard and pasted it all together. And you see, I did put sort of like code numbers there. Because we're going to have to figure out how does it to do this. When this thing goes up on the wall, we want to know what section goes up over here. Is it A15 or A14 or B or what? Well, I keep track of that pretty carefully. So that's what that would look like uh, but with the lines in between. And then if we push these all together so we get a better image of it, it looks something like this. And here again, if you, you know, take your glasses off and look at it that way, it pretty well fuzzes together. Or look through uh, your basic eyelashes, you get the idea. I made this one. This is all made out of square, uh, two inch by two inch pieces of cardboard. Six foot high and uh, a folding screen. So I would come in and give a lecture. And the first thing I'd do would be to put up this screen in the background to get the idea. Uh, and uh, try to get the notion that this is uh, a head that's going to be uh, oh, about four feet high. Now, what we did, and you don't see it anymore, but on the north side of the Fine Arts Building, uh, the, design, the uh, architect made it in such a way that there was a road that would go in underneath and come out on the other side. Some of you maybe have used that, okay? It was his intent that that would be where people would drop off. If you would have, uh, you know, guests and so on, you drive in there, drop them off, and pull on through, and go out and park someplace or other. So it was a road went through that building. So it had a ceiling and it had a wall. Well, uh, what we did, we, <laughs> we got a whole bunch of guys from uh, maintenance to come over with some step ladders and stuff. And they actually made a wall on either side and in front. We had a ceiling and a back wall on a rick. And then they we built two walls and another one in front. My gesture's good enough, okay? With a door on either side. That was gonna be the mural studio. We uh, hung lights in there, which didn't exist. And this is all with these guys, uh, Put in three Saturdays, okay? Everybody working like mad, but donating their time. So it was a terrific idea, and I was delighted, of course. <clears throat> so we had a mural studio, and hey, that was right on the end of the building. By that time, of course, I was no longer in the end of Maine, because end of Maine had gone. We were now in the new fine arts building, now the Noel building, okay? Uh, and uh, my, my ceramics room, my office was just about out the door. So I could run back and forth between my office, my classes, and the mural studio and keep an eye on how things were working. And what I did, uh, I, the mural hired a couple of kids to be foreman, okay? I'm gonna really show you exactly what's doing, see all the bugs on it, and you take care of this. And now you take over certain hours and accept anybody who comes in as a volunteer. You show them what to do, I will tell you what we need to do. Uh, Susan was one of these people, lovely girl, and she is printing a tile. Now, you may or may not be familiar with uh, silk screen operation. Uh, I will digress in case. Uh, silk screen is uh, basically, uh, you make a, a frame with a screen on the bottom. The finer the screen, the, the uh, uh, finer the material can go through it. And you make it in such a way that you can put it on top of something and then put a bit of a, uh, a liquid um, ink on top of it and squeegee it across. And it squeegees through the screen. You pick the screen up and there's an image underneath. So it's a stencil system. So you can keep printing these and squishing them all the way through. 
Make sense? I hope. Pretty poor, but they didn't have too much of a uh, Susan is doing this now. She's got a little bit of a screen standing up on end, okay? Uh, with her right hand, she's putting a tile in place and holding it, uh, 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 holding a squeegee with the uh, left hand, uh, getting ready to print. Now, this is usually done with, with ink. And if I use the term ink, don't misunderstand, because this is, we were printing these not with ink, but actually with glaze. Very, very finely ground <laughs> glaze, uh, liquid glaze, almost like ink, like paste. And that's what we were using. But this is going to dry, and then we would fire it in a kill to about 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. In which case, that glaze would fuse together and fuse on top of each tile. So each tile would be hand printed with a sim screen. And see, control data again, got it. Control data could tell us how many buffaloes, how many trout, how many water molecules we, we would need. They would have a histogram about how many they needed of everything. Uh, so we could print these ahead of time and stock them up. So this is what Susan's doing, is getting ready to print. She's putting a tile down with her right hand and holding the uh, uh, screen up and uh, have a squeegee in her left hand. There she's put the screen down and she's using the squeegee now and just stroking it across. That's just a two inch stroke. That's the tile's already two inch, right? Just squash it on through. And down here, uh, she is putting tiles onto a kiln shelf. Uh, you see a bunch have already printed. And she'll put another row in, another row in, another row in, until that's all filled up. Then we'll set that aside, get another cookie sheet until it's filled up, and stack the kiln full, and we would fire maybe twice a week and have the kilns in there. And the rural project purchased two electric kilns to do this with. So, yeah, we did use like, electricity from the state, but uh, the, the kilns themselves were purchased with the uh, uh, funds. Here there's some been printed already, and this young man had a whole bunch of tiles in front of him uh, in different size stacks, who cares? Uh, and he is uh, placing them. Now this is the interesting thing here too. He does have a uh, paper, uh, a panel here one by two a foot. And uh, Olean of New York, the tile people, uh, furnished us with a half a dozen of these uh, frames. And these have spaces in that allow for a minute one sixteenth difference. These will allow for that one sixteenth. So what you do is you put all the tiles into there at various distances apart, but then you hold up on edge and tap it a little bit so all the tiles fall down into the same side. So they are the same distance apart. You want to follow? Okay. Uh, now what he's doing over here is he's trying to keep track of a design. Here he has a panel, and he's got his finger on so he knows where he is, and he's trying to keep track on what goes in here. Well, if he's going to have a, a world goes into there, and then he'll move his finger over, and whatever's next goes in, and so on. And he'll fill this all up according to this. This will all be printed from a design from control data. It's going to give us a whole print. And I'll cut it up into usable sections of about three by four feet at a time. That's about the maximum that we can handle uh, comfortably. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so when he gets this all done, then what's going to happen is we're going to take some gummed paper, okay? And we're going to paste the gummed paper on top of that, covering up all the tiles. We don't know what's underneath anymore. All covered up. And we'll mark that with a code number, 1A or whatever it's going to be, with an arrow pointing which side is up to, and so on. So we're going to end up with a whole bunch of these panels, these tiles, but they'll all be covered up. We won't know what's inside. They'll all be pasted shut for the time being. 
But the nice thing is, we can pick the whole doggone tile up, carry it over here, so that draped through, okay? Enough of that glue on there to hold it in place. And here's everybody working. And are you helping? Oh, go ahead. Sure. Okay, this, this is almost done. Harry's almost finished with this. Young lady's bringing in some more tiles. Susan's printing some more. Somebody else is stocking. These are all relatively simple jobs. Can be done, can be done by almost anybody with minimum explanation, okay? Doesn't take much to switch them. So speed through there to set the top. The only hesitation is somebody gets cocky and start putting the wrong tiles in place, okay? Because they're gonna maybe, then maybe we put the paper on top and glue them all down, but we won't know it until the very end. So I'm gonna be in a nail biting situation until this thing finally gets up and the tape uh, gets removed. There you see the tile, uh, the design they're working from. And the little dots that you're seeing up there are um, places that are going to be left empty. No tiles are going to be there. Well, may just skip those places because that's where there's going to be screws holding this thing up. Okay? And we'll cover those with a tile later on once it's in place. So they're watching these and uh, <coughs> I'm just kind of floating around uh, keeping track of them a little bit. But again, pretty hard to make a mistake. I have to go on faith, however. Now, going back outside, we arranged with uh, sheet metal people to break some uh, uh, furring strips uh, out of 16 gauge uh, galvanized, uh, some uh, zigzag strips that are going to get screwed into the building. And you can see here that there are holes already uh, placed. And these will be put into here with, uh, with uh, stainless steel screws so they won't rot away. And a piece of uh, screen, um, copper screen in there to keep vermin from crawling up. Be a nice place for bats, for instance, to hide. So we're gonna cover that all up. So these are gonna be screwed into the wall uh, at the proper spacing and there are going to be uh, holes drilled into the mortar lines. We're not going to try to drill the bricks with the mortar. And put them up in about two foot sections. <coughs> and Ellis Stone got this fancy gadget. The guys go up on, Lord, on that uh, rig and put these, put these uh, panels, excuse me, these uh, yeah, these panels in place. So we got the whole wall covered. Now, if I've done everything right, it ought to come out right. Okay? If I've done everything right. But I remember, uh, 150 feet long, if I'm off a sixteenth of an inch on a tile times 150 feet, that's going to be an awful lot of difference at the very end. We've got to go on faith on this. And I was having a lot of faith and also a lot of nerve to it. Okay, that's done. Now that the day came, we'll start to hang them. And these guys come out with a couple of panels. You see these are two panels up here. You see where the, the dots are? These are where screws will go. And these, these guys come out <coughs> And they say, okay, uh, what do we do? I don't know, we've never done that before. <laughs> well, should we do it this way? I don't know, we've never done it before. So we had a little huddle and, well, okay. We finally decided starting at the middle and going out. So if we're going to be off, we'll be off evenly, if that makes any sense at all. All right? Uh, but we, I try to keep this to a minimum. I tried to make it as precise as possible. So they're putting them in 
uh, starting at the center and then be going up and out. Oh, I did get one in backwards. Well, you can see pretty much where the, uh, the screws are going to go. So we're going right through uh, the material which is, in, which is the backing. Now the backing was interesting because <clears throat> the backing was Wonderboard. This never existed before. Uh, the Madison people said we should use, um, what was it, cement asbestos board. And we tried that and I made a couple of panels and we stuck them up on the building for two years and the tops fell off. That's what those guys are supposed to use. So we got a hold of this guy in uh, Cleveland and he was running the Wonderboard people, just invented this. And what it is, it's, it's uh, silk, it's not silk, um, fiberglass screen with concrete in between. So so sort of like a concrete sandwich with uh, silk screen in, uh, on either side, okay? Uh, so it's got a little bit of flexibility to it and some strength, but it can be cut with a, uh, a knife and broken open and so on. And uh, he was very interested about the whole thing. And uh, we were wondering about how do we get him to stick onto that surface? And he said, here, here, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to come out here and see you guys. So he hops on a plane, comes from Cleveland, comes all the way over here, puts on the coveralls, and comes in the studio and is showing us how to mix up the mud to put this together. Now what you want to do is, you want to mix this stuff up. He's got a trowel and he's got a bit of water. We end up using a, um, uh, Oh, I think right now. But immaterial, um, a, a mixture of water and the, the, the uh, solution for to make a, a paste out of this. And he's showing us how to make it stiffen up. He picks them up and turns it upside down. See, if it stays on the bottom, it's good. If it falls off, it's too wet. If I can't shake it off, it's too dry. So uh, he shows us how to do all this. This is what you're going to do. This is how you spread it out. This is how you put these tiles. Remember all these tiles have got the uh, uh, paste uh, paper on. So we flip those on top, put in place, and allow it to be uh, cured for a couple of days, and then wash off all that paper, and you can see the tiles then, finally, the way it should be. With it marked on where it's supposed to go. And that's what these guys are doing now, taking these panels and putting them in place. And this is supposed to end right about right about here and there's a guideline that's pretty dang close uh, the uh, uh, the workers actually put in tiles here on this edge to cover up the space remember those furring strips are a little bit off from the wall okay a little space in there so they will put that on there and uh, I said, I'll show you how to mix them. No, no, we don't do it. So they mixed them up, and sure enough, they start falling off the next day. I started showing them how to use that material that we were using with the wonder for. And there it's going up a little bit harder. finishing up over there and then we're coming in here with a cherry picker and uh, guys up on the top of there uh, with a uh, caulking gun because there's a little gap between these different panels so we want to fill that gap up so he's caulking that together later on I had to go up there again myself because uh, some of the uh, uh, tiles uh, showed too light or too dark, so I had to come in and kind of guess at how much darkness to put in. Doesn't make much sense, but if you look at the tiles closely, you'll see there's some places where I've, I've got, kind of gone in uh, by hand uh, to blend them in a little bit more. This answers the question, is there a red vest? <laughs> Which everybody seems to be so interested in. No, there ain't no red vest. There is a vest, but it's brown. Okay. I didn't figure, you know, you know. Hey, Lee had a big piece of this. 
some all right, okay? He was supportive all the way, very good. So you get a little credit on that. So I made him a tile, especially. And, uh, well, Phil Marshall was the chancellor in those days. So I created a design for Phil Marshall. He had some kind of a, a Puritan background. So I made sort of a pilgrim hat for him out of it. And uh, gave him some credit there, although he said he didn't really like to be quite that close to Jacob's. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see there's a, a tile missing. We know exactly what tile it is. If we have to move one of these things, we know what tiles to chip away. We don't have to smash the whole dog on thing. So from a distance, That's what we wanted to do in the beginning. And that's what we ended up doing. Of course, the trees are different. Uh, the street has changed. All kinds of things have happened. But the mural lives on. So all things considered, uh, I'm about done, and so is my time. How long did it take? I don't know. We're going back to about 70, 1975. And this is in various stages of, of uh, well, you can't be, uh, give you a fair answer to that. Anybody else? Thank you so very much. <laughs>